Hello viewers, how are you? Hope you are fine. Welcome back to my channel, Drawing Time with a Story. If you are new in my channel, I will introduce myself and my channel with you. I am Suraya Parvin and in my channel, I select a theme or an object to draw or paint and while drawing or painting, uh, when you will see it or watch it, you will not get bored because at the same time you can enjoy a beautiful story or some information regarding this topic so please don't forget to subscribe my channel to stay connected with me to stay connected with drawing time with this story as you saw my today's topic is the national flower of philippines and that is sampaguita and if my pronunciation is wrong please forgive me because i am a foreigner and i tried my heart and soul to um what will i say to show my respect and my gratitude towards the filipino my friends my brothers and my sisters love you guys and it was a request from one of my filipino sister their sister please uh, can you please draw the beautiful national flower of philippines that is sampaguita and in bangladesh sister um, in bangladesh this flower is named as jasmine and it is really beautiful and i tried my whole best to present the uh, this beautiful flower and now i will narrate a story that is called the legend of sampaguita and if my again i am pardon i am asking pardon if my pronunciation is wrong please forgive me so let's jump to the story time a long time ago there were neighboring barangas named balintawak and gagalangin between the two bagarange is a very sturdy fence made up of dried bamboo every five years they destroy it and build a new fence sometimes the guardsmen from balintawak watch over the fence often times the guardsmen from gagalangin everything is working according to the rules of each datu the Datu of Barangay, Balintawak, has a daughter with incomparable beauty and kindness. Her name is Rosita. Her mother died when she was young. However, she has four maids to assist her every need. There are a lot of handsome young men who admire her. But the only man who captured her heart is the son of Gagalangin's Datu whose name is Delphine. The conflict between their parents didn't stop Delphine and Rosita from loving each other. At the end of the bamboo fence lies their secret lair. Every night when the moon is bright, they meet at the end of the fence and stroll along Rosita's maids. Their relationship is hidden from both of their Datu parents. One day, the Datu of Gagalangin heard that the fence is being destroyed by the servants of Datu Palintawak so, they, so that they can build a new one. He asked one of his girls to watch at the said fence making. When the guard came back, he told the Datu that the new fence was moved. He was mad because the Datu was Balintawak took 5 meters of their land. Immediately, he sent a man to the Datu of the neighboring barangay. Tell the Datu of Balintawak to put the fence back where it is supposed to be. They are being unlawful and stealing one's land is a crime, said the Datu of Gagalangin. When the Datu of Balintawak heard about it, he became furious and asked the servant to give a message to their Datu. Tell your Datu that I never stole anything from him. I just placed the bamboo fences at its right place according to the documents that I discovered, written by my ancestors. Delphine's father was very much displeased with the other Datu's response. This kind of conflicts usually results bloodshed among the two countries. 
the dato of the gagalangin prepared his unit for the upcoming battle he needs to get their barangas stolen land even by violent means when the news reached the dato of balintawak he eagerly prepared his battle until as well the two leaders are now ready for a never ending war a few days before gagalangin's plan to attack the balintawak the dato got sick he became seriously ill that led him to his death the responsibility was then handed to delfin he will be the one to lead the battle troops to barangay gagalangin the female servants told rosita what was about to happen and she started to become frightened delfin is so young and doesn't have any experience when it comes to war his father on the other hand had been trained to fight since he was still a child she worried too much she wanted to talk to delphine and ask him to forfeit the war and simply talk to his father and settle the conflict peacefully however they don't have time to converse anymore tomorrow is the start of an endless battle between the two barangays both parties lost so many lives delphine was badly hurt and shed a lot of blood he started to blurry he was half conscious when he fell to the ground before his last breath he told one of his comrades to bury him near the end of the fence where he and rosita used to secretly see each other nobody can ever tell what really really happened to the young lovers or the result of the war all they knew is that rosita became seriously ill when she knew that delphine died in the battle her father called so many doctors to make her feel well but neither one of them in them can treat rosita when she was about to die rosita told her father to bury her near delphine at the end of the bamboo face fins though it is hard for the datu to do she still obeyed her daughter's last wish many years had passed and the existence of barangis gradually disappeared spenders came and the city of manila was established balintawak and gagalangin became populated but all the people living in these two places were having a mysterious experience during the month of may especially when the moon is bright they hear a mystical mystical sweet voice of a lady saying sumpakita sumpakita i swear i swear but nobody can see from whom it is coming from it seems as if it comes from the bushes where little white flowers grow although the flowers are so tiny it bursts out a different kind of scent that everybody loves to smell that is what usually happens every month of may each year because everyone was so curious about the voice they all decided to dig up the spot and uncover the mystery behind it to their surprise they found the roots of the bushes where the lovely flowers grow comes from the mouth of the two bodies buried not so far from each other the elders remembered the memorial of the two lovers delphine and rosita the story spread fast the word sampakita evolved as sampaguita that signifies an everlasting love of delphine and rosita so it's the end of the story as we have time in our hands so we are moving to another story that is called the legend of sampaguita flower in a far away land of the north there live a very beautiful lady whose name is liawe her beauty was being heard even in the other far away land so it is not impossible that she had so many suitors one day a group of hunters from the south passes by in lila west place but a misfortune happened tangul one of the hunters was attacked by a wild boar the young lad was being sent to lila west father to be given a first aid and it was the beginning of their close friendship lila west and tangul fell in love with each other even in a short period of time 
When Tangol fully recovered, he asked permission to lay away and her parents to go home and to get his parents because he wanted to ask Liaowei hence formally. Liaowei was full of hopes and dreams while looking the young man gone away. But Liaowei's hopes and dreams suddenly vanished when Tangol never came back, like what he was promised. Many ma months had passed since the young man gone, but she never heard or get any news from Tangol. One of her old suitors made a gossip just to discredit him. He spread a bad news about Tangol, that he will not be coming back again because he is a married man. Lilawa's heart was fell into sadness longings, loneliness and jealousy. She got very sick and since it is her own self that can only heal her, only a few weeks later she became so ill and died. Before the young lady died, the only words that she uttered is I cursed you, cursed you. The words that I cursed you, cursed you is what was the only thing that she felt for Tangul. After a few days of Lilawe's burial, Tangul came back together with his parents. He said he was not being able to return so soon because his mother was ill. He cannot accept the fact that the only woman he loved was now gone. Because of too much sorrow that he felt almost every day that Tangul showered Lilawe's tomb with his tears. And he even never returned to his own place, just to watch over his beloved resting place. Just a couple of days, he noticed something above in Lilawe's stumps. There is a plant grow in there, a plant which was still being showered by his tears. When the plant grew, it bears a small flower, and when he tried to smell it, it smells so good. A very sweet, delicate fragment. So he calls it Karsiu or Sompakita in Filipino words, a words that Lila was lived before she died, and that was where the name Sampaguita came from. So it was a very similar story, but both are so sweet, and uh, the endings were not actually. Uh, the both stories actually ended very sorrowfully but left a message that true love never ends but uh, when the love ends but its sweet smell still exists so let me know in my comment section and uh, how was the story and the painting today let me know your suggestions and like my sister if you have any kind of suggestion or any kind of request to uh, draw or paint please let me know in my comment section because they are always free for you and I will be very happy to draw for you, to paint for you and prepare a story to listen to connect with me to stay connected with drawing time with the story. See you soon with a new story.